Okay, so hi everyone. Welcome to my Kara's journey. So in this video today, we're gonna to continue on from our last um, talk and we were addressing the truth. Okay, so in the last, um, in the last uh, video, we were discussing John uh, 14, 6, which, sa which says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I believe the word. The word is true. The word is God breathed. It is my final authority. So this is what I'm going to go by. Once we understand that and that becomes real to us, we can continue. Let's move on over here to Proverbs 12, 22, which warns us that the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. Now I like to read a lot of the scripture very slowly because I don't want to miss anything that's being said here. Let's read that again. In Proverbs 12, 22, and it says, he warns us, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. Okay, so this verse emphasizes, hold on, this verse emphasizes the importance of honesty, integrity, as falsehoods and deceptions are displeasing to God. But upholding the truth, we demonstrate our reverence for Him. See, a lot of the times I think that in the society today, we're not reverencing God the way we used to many years ago. Okay, um, God is not joking when he talks. Um, I don't think that we revere him. We, um, another word is respect. I don't think that we understand who's talking. And so I really want you to get to understand uh, this because it is, it is so true. People today just don't revere him. They're not afraid of the word of God. They're not... They're not even believing the word of God. And so let's continue because that's a whole topic all by itself. Now, furthermore, in Psalm 119, 160 declares, declares, the sum of your word is truth and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. This verse underscores the reliability and eternal nature of God's word. The Bible is a reliable source of truth that provides guidance and wisdom to navigate the complexities of life. That is true. Now, I'm going to say the Bible itself tells you and gives you many examples of many sins. We're supposed to learn from the lessons of the Bible. There was, uh, don't you think there was enough horrific stuff or enough sin in the Bible that would actually teach us, you know, what to stay away from? And this is what he's saying here. The Bible itself is a reliability and eternal nature of God's word. There's nothing in God's word that we can't replace with a lot of the sinful things that we're calling today, whatever they are. Sin is sin, okay? And the degrees of sin, that's a whole separate issue also all by itself. But sin in the Bible is the same as the sin is today. Whether it's sexual immorality, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, whether it's lying, adultery, and the list can go on, okay? The final authority is going to be the Word of God. So um, that never changes. So let's continue on here. Now, um, in our pursuit of the truth, let us remember that the words of Proverbs 23, 23, which states this, but truth by wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Don't give that away. This verse encourages us to cherish truth and actively seek it, even if it requires sacrifice or commitment. May we continually seek the truth found in God's word and allow it to guide our thoughts, our words, and our actions. By doing so, we can walk in alignment with his divine purpose and experience the abundant and the fulfilling life that he has promised us. One of the things that goes along with what I just said here, um, by following truth, following wisdom, 
We talk about integrity, we talk about character. So what are you made of? Have you ever asked yourself, what is it that I need to change in me to be a person of integrity? What is it that I need to change in me that can cause me to be more wise? Um, what is it that I need to change in me so that I can walk in alignment with God? These are questions that we can only ask ourselves. And sometimes we don't like to look at ourselves because we can see our own flaws. But the truth is, is that we should be growing all of the time. Um, God did not create us to just be stagnant, not growing. We should always be growing. So we notice the things in us that need to change. Now, I'm not saying that we can just change and snap our fingers and change ourselves because we need God to make the changes. A lot of times we can't do these things on our own. We do need him. But I am going to say that the truth is the truth. Our character is our character. And I don't know if you guys remember, like when I was growing up, our word meant everything. Today, our word means nothing. No matter what we say and do, you can pay people off. Um, years ago, it used to be you could shake somebody's hand and say, um, this is a deal or this is a promise or I will do this. And that's how they did it. Well, God puts a lot of emphasis on what we say. It's extreme. He spoke the world into existence. So you can imagine exactly how and what he thinks about his word. So it's exactly what we should be thinking about ours. So with that being said, I do wanna continue talking more about the truth. And the truth does encompass a whole lot of things. And who do we wanna be? What example do we wanna show our kids? We want to show them character, person of integrity, you're a person of your word, and the list just goes on. So I hope that this message blessed you. I hope you have an amazing day. I declare you blessed in the name of Jesus, and I'll see you in the next My Kara's Journey. Amen.